Yeah, I agree. These postcards are great. I'm anxious to show them to everybody. But it's that time of year again, buddy. Christmas party. Don't eat all the sausage balls this time. Hello, all you minders out there from across the world. Season's greetings from here in South Carolina in the U.S. And it is that time of year. Christmas. Busy. Insanely busy. So many personal things popping right now that I would be oversharing if I went into them. So we're not going to do that. Both good and bad. Mostly good. <laughs> the bad is just typical life stuff you have to deal with, right? But our family is healthy and happy and we're enjoying the holidays, facing the challenges. Hope you guys are too. This video is like a couple weeks late, I know. Maybe longer by the time I get it posted, I don't know. But I've got a postcard review. Just a really a brief look at these postcards. 100% uh, cotton postcards, so they're really great. And I'm going to do two spontaneous winter landscapes. Small little ones that were very expressionistic and very fun to do. So I hope you enjoy those. And I hope it'll set the mood for you as we slide right on into Christmas week. So let's get to it. Ready, buddy? Got some postcards to show you today, and these come from the fine folks at Etcher Labs. They asked me if I wanted to take a look at these, and I said, well, of course I do. 100% cotton paper watercolor postcards, and I haven't even opened these yet. I wanted to do that on camera. So there's a little sort of a swatch card envelope that they sent. I guess that's all of the papers. So I think that these uh, cards, which you're about to look at, are... The same papers that are in the uh, sketchbooks, the Etcher sketchbooks. Not the Signature Series Perfect Sketchbook or Perfect Sketchbook, but they're regular ones. These books, which I've tested once, and we will refresh everyone's memory on that. But I'm going to be testing them again. So let's open these. This is the cold press box. Got a little note here on the back. Tag us with Etcher postcard on social media for a chance to win $50 art voucher. Ooh. A nice box. How many cards do we have in this box? It actually does not say. Vegan friendly. Well, looks like one or two hundred at least. That's a lot of postcards. I confess I don't usually paint and send postcards, but I may have to try that. You know, regardless of whether you send postcards, painted postcards or not, the, these are nice little uh, study size pre-cut pieces of paper. What is this? Humidity damages cotton paper. Use this reusable bag to store them in good condition. Interesting. All right, let's open it up. Nice. All right, so I went on their website. There are a hundred cards, so this is a hundred cards in each box. It'll run you about thirty-nine dollars U.S. And it does appear to be the same weight, 230 GSM, which is 90, maybe 110 pounds, something like that. This was the test that I did with the, the sketchbook, same paper, and I did a video on this. Loved the paper, I thought it worked really well. All right, so let's take a quick look at the hot press. You can see right off the bat without even opening, these are not quite as white, a little more off-white or natural white. Yeah, so nice. Very smooth. You got your choice. And really their cold press texture is not very textured. Not super textured anyway. So Etcher continues to expand their product and listen to the demands of a watercolor artist, serious watercolor artists, about 100% cotton paper. I'm so happy that they're doing that. So I'm anxious to give this a try. I'm going to do a couple of spontaneous winter scenes on these. I'm going to do one on the hot press and one on the cold press. We'll talk about these as I work on them. Well, I have these taped up and I have cold press on the left there. And I have a piece of the hot press taped up over on the right. So we're going to kind of do the wet and wet on each of these first and let them dry and then go back and do details. It's spontaneous. So, you know, I just try different things. In this case, I thought I would try some sort of uh, geometric brush strokes in the background and then spray them and see what happens. Nine times out of ten, what I'm doing when I do spontaneous painting is I'm just, I'm reacting. 
I do something, I try it, then I react to what has happened. I see what it's done and I say, okay, where do I go from here? Not a lot of planning, of course. I did kind of have this sort of V composition in mind. And I also did, of course, want it to be landscape. And I was thinking sort of a snow scene on this one. Now I turned it over just so that I could get the flow to run up off the top. Uh, again, I'm using these broad sort of flat brush strokes. Um, this is going to be a, a little sort of a small wooded close-up scene with a lot of small trunk trees. So I did also have that in mind when I started. I was inspired by something I saw, I think it was on Pinterest, and I don't know who the artist was. Now maybe it was on Instagram. Uh, it was another watercolorist, and so I wanted to try a similar look. Sort of the edge of a little wooded area with some small trees, small bare tree trunks. So I have in mind that the foreground is sort of a snowbank. And with this tissue, all I'm trying to do is establish some transition edges where it goes from wooded area to snow and I'm just trying to keep all the strokes very vertical so to give myself a, a soft background to paint the trees against now as the flow slows down on the wet and wet process I'm, I'm just trying to stroke in more and more of these vertical strokes again to give myself a base to paint against it's very impressionistic very Zoltan Sabo if you know who that is famous watercolor painter from days gone by and it's still wet enough to lift so I'm, I'm rinsing out my brush or the brush has been rinsed out and it just has clear water in it now and so I'm going in and lifting it's usually easiest to lift while the paint is still wet if you get too much water on there though you'll get a big background and then I'm pulling down some of those edges into uh, little trunk shapes working on that transition from the wood, deeper woods to the foreground snowbank. More lifting, more wet lifting. Background is just damp now, it's not super wet. A lot of this painting is probably better done flat or nearly flat. Just because of my camera setup, it works better for me to have it at an angle, so I deal with a lot of rundown. Now, if you're not experienced, you may not want to do that. Dealing with rundown is a little bit tricky. See the, these little backwashes I put in there? Just to add some little sort of areas where maybe snow collected. Now, the other one over here, I meant to actually record that too. Uh, that wet and wet process and realized I didn't have the camera going so sorry about that but it was a lot of the same process except that I'm sort of a little further away this is more of a distant scene uh, with a wooded area and that wet and wet process or, or base basically done now I'm going to detail them both and they're both bone dry so I'm going back to the one on the left and it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm using a rigger and just stroking in uh, now the distinct tree shapes and their fine limbs. And I do have sort of a center interest focal point there just off to the right. So I'm, I'm focusing your attention there. Now this is a process I wanted to show you in real time. I'm just adding, getting a sort of a faint soft light coming from the left. So that's going to throw some soft shadows to the right. And it's a technique a lot of times I use is just smearing with my finger. You don't have to do that just in snow. That works on all kinds of landscapes. I use my finger quite a bit. It's not only gives these little tree trunk shapes uh, a base, but again, it throws 
the impression of a little bit of light coming in from the left. And again, just tapping in a little more texture to get that base formed. Now on the right side, as I mentioned, uh, this is a much more distant scene. And if you've ever seen distant tree lines in the winter, uh, the fine branches, when they fi finally congregate together, will, will look almost like there's foliage back there, but it'll be very gray. So that's the impression I'm trying to give. These are actually meant to be mostly bare trees. But because it's distant and because it's, it's so dense, uh, you're going to get a lot of those shapes, those neat, those fine branches sort of merging together into a texture. And you'll only really, your eye will only pick up the bolder, more distinct branches. And out on the edge there where you see them silhouetted, I'm just trying to show a little more of the branch structure. But just observe some wintry woods when you're driving by sometime and you'll notice how all the dense bare branches just sort of merge and uh, become solid colors. I love stroking in texture with a raker. I think that works really well. And I left a lot of that wet and wet runny impression down at the bottom. I left a lot of that. I thought it would just look cool. And I'm just popping in uh, contrast where I want it to be a little more contrasty. And you can see where I'm weaving in some of the fine branches into the solid color just to give the impression that's all wintry woods. No real foliage there, but it's just so dense it's creating solids. I did want some impression of a sky, but I wanted it to serve the overall vignette. So I didn't want to paint in a whole sky. And I'm going to call that done. Now with this tape you have to be careful. I've had a lot of people ask me how do I remove the tape while well, you're seeing it right there at a right, almost right angle and very slowly. And it usually will tear. If it's going to tear, it'll tear on the corner. So you want to be careful. I didn't have any tearing on these. And thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope everyone has a great Christmas and New Year's. I'll be off for a couple weeks, as I had mentioned before. And thanks so much, patrons. You have made this such a great year. And your support has been super, super important. We'll see everybody in the next video and in the next year. Bye-bye.